Hello and welcome to Afterlife Topics and Metaphysics. This is Cyrus, your host, where we talk about complex metaphysical supernatural subjects. I'm an author. I run uh, several communities online concerning this subject and uh, occasionally public speaker. And this has been, of course, a major part of my life that I've dedicated to for probably about 20 years now. And uh, during that time, I've um, heard many interpretations about life beyond the grave until I began to find so many commonalities and similarities in so many different accounts, so many different reports, and then I began having my own experiences to kind of have in what is really is a vast, infinite topic, at least the ability to narrow down the common experiences we have when we uh, transition from this world, when we die. And during this time, I've also encountered a lot of misconceptions. Now, there's a particular misconception that I talk about the most, whether it's in my books or on this channel. A lot of you guys know what that is. And in this video, I want to talk about if that misconception is directly attributed to NDEs or if that is also a misconception. I uh, definitely theorize that it is a misconception. So what are we talking about here? Uh, I'm going to highlight a post on the group that this is just actually a very common uh, opinion, a common post. A lot of people have this point of view because maybe they haven't done a whole lot of research. Quite a few people email me who um, believe this and are very distressed because of it. And it's causing a lot of stress, especially if they've lost loved ones. It is a, for many people, it can be a very disconcerting idea. And other people uh, sometimes pop up who are big fans of this concept and they will literally take that concept to the grave, which itself is kind of a problem because a lot of times we create or we choose to go into the worlds based upon what we want in our belief systems. And I have to say this version of an afterlife is extremely limiting to the potential of a human soul, at least in my opinion. So anyway, so a thread appeared on the group which was titled, Are There Jobs on the Other Side? Now those of us who do astral projection know that um, basically human souls do enjoy doing all kinds of jobs and there's lots and lots of jobs out there uh, that we can continue as to our heart's content. By the way, if you hear lots of kids outside, uh, it's raining and they're all playing in the rain. It's a, it's a Philippines thing. When it rains, kids all run out and play. It's kind of nice. So, yeah, so, I mean, uh, not just from astral projection, you can go back through many, many decades of spirit communication talking about the same thing, uh, whether it's um, the communications from the great Oscar Wilde, who is still performing and writing plays, or whether it's the great Chopin, who is still composing music, or um, really when you just have normal experiences or communications with loved ones, you see them often doing the things that they um, still had enjoyed while here, just in a higher dimensional state of existence where you can still have basically all the bells and whistles of this world. It's why some people cross over, they don't even know that they've crossed over because they look around, it's still a world that looks like this one. And then they begin to realize that you have all these powers and abilities that you didn't have a moment before when your consciousness was uh, was located in, in this body and it just basically just locates to a different world. That's what the afterlife is all about. Anyway, so that's my determination. So a, a thread popped up. It's like, are there jobs in the afterlife? And then this was a response. And this is again, a common response It's something I see a lot. And I'm going to read it out. Um, so the commenter of a response was in response to the concept of people having jobs when you cross over. She says, say what? Does anyone here follow NDEers accounts of being in the afterlife? I've been studying NDEs for four years now and all accounts claim we have no, wait, this is, this is very important, all accounts. That's really something we can, we can um, contest. All accounts claim we have no bodies, we have no desires of the flesh which could be a lot of things. Even love itself is, can be, you can extrapolate as a desire of the flesh. I mean, who doesn't, you know, like cuddling somebody they love, cuddling your puppy. Uh, so all of that's gone. Uh, no desires of the flesh. We communicate telepathically and that's, uh, and, and that's it. Sorry, the, the, the grammar is a little bit skewed. That's it. It's a, that's it. It's a plane filled with intense love and we're all connected to everything. Nothing about jobs or, or homes 
or anything to do with this physical plane. So pardon me if I sound skeptical about this. Um, well, you are pardoned, but in my opinion, you're also wrong. There's so many near-death experiences which completely def defy this interpretation and even mainstream ones. So in the book Proof of Heaven by Eben Alexander, he had many different types of experiences, I think, in different types of realms of consciousness. But at one point, he was in like this celestial jungle riding on the wing of a butterfly, uh, you know, really, um, uh, you know, a beautiful landscape, but a heavenly otherworldly landscape where, you know, to be able to ride on a butterfly, you still have arms and legs, you're in an astral form. And, uh, you know, I really like that part of the book. And that's just one account, and there are so many more. So to be able to come away with an interpretation like this, really you need to have um, sort of blinders on. So you have to be only looking at the evidence from a very narrow perspective and not be willing to go outside of that. So it's, um, what's that saying? Like if you're a hammer, all you see is nails. Well, if it's your intention, desire, belief, that we should become emotionless, desireless, floating orbs of light in a sea of pure love without any form, function, creativity, or anything like that ever again, then you're going to filter out only the NDEs that um, cater to that belief system. And so that's one element. And the other element of this is that you may unwittingly find or get the interpretation or the misconception of the other side being this way because certain NDEs or spiritual experiences and certain mediums and pop culture will elevate a certain type of experience. Now the least controversial, the kind of, I don't know, um, kind of milk toast example of the afterlife is the one that doesn't include anything that could even be interpreted again as controversial. So if you're just a desireless floating orb of light, then that is not something that's going to cause people to say, well, you know, where is the minority representation here? You know, if you're in an astral plane, you know, where are the minorities? Or um, if you're in an astral plane, what about the animals? Um, you know, what about pain? Can you still feel pain? What about, you know, I could go on and on. as a, a long list of things that people may have a bone to pick with about the idea of going to worlds that are very similar to this one. You know, they say, well, what about this person who was mean to me? You know, are they still living in this other world on the on this other side that looks and feels like this world? Are they still being mean to other people? I'm just using the most basic uh, concepts here, you know, to illustrate my point. So publishing companies and marketers and people on TV, they're going to shy away from those types of accounts and promote the ones where it's like it's just pure love and bliss. And, you know, without adding kind of like what is the majority of afterlife experiences, which are not necessarily that even that 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 particular experience seems like a state of mind to me much more than a, an actual realm or plane that you go to. It's like you have an experience with the light. But when that experience is over, the question is, what kind of other world will you inhabit? And a lot of NDEs don't get far enough to necessarily answer that question. Um, so next is the is the idea that NDEs themselves are somehow, you know, if you study NDEs, you're going to come to this conclusion. And I just don't think that's true at all. And I'm going to put that to the test here in a minute. So uh, before we go further, you are watching Afterlife Topics where we tackle these types of issues. I think they're pretty important. If you think they are too, I encourage you, please go down and hit that subscribe button, like the video and share this video to I don't know, a new age group or your new age friends who maybe haven't thought about this, these concepts from this angle or this position yet. And also, if you if you do want to stay in touch, get involved, work with me and all of that, then you can feel free to don donate at the patreon.com forward slash afterlife topics or just my PayPal address is in the description down below. You can also get involved in the classes or you know, private consultations with me and all that kind of stuff helps keep me able to eat while I live on the road or end up locked and stranded in weird parts of the world. Okay, so uh, what I want to do now is I've done this before with some success on this channel is in, in, in an attempt to kind of refute this idea that 
NDEs lead to this particular interpretation of an afterlife, I'm going to go on to the great endearth.org website and then read randomly some people's NDEs that have been submitted recently and see if that doesn't if that lines up or if it does line up with the idea of being in other worlds and having bodies and being able to I don't know work and do physical things or create things or do the things you love as opposed to having like an amorphous um, Borg like existence for all eternity. So I, I'm, you know, I did, just from doing a cursory glance, I'm willing to guess by applying just a little bit of critical thinking, it's possible that you're not going to get this kind of interpretation. And I might be wrong because there are definitely NDEs out there which seem like, okay, you know, you pass away and you're in a sea of light and love and you're communicating telepathically. Because that does happen, and this is almost like a um, staging area for the soul. I mean, you know, you, you can be in a kind of source grounding point where it's, you know, pure love and telepathic communication. And there's invisible souls everywhere, but it's still, it's a staging area. You know, you f from that point, the question is, where in the multiverse do you want to travel? What do you want to do next? So, you know, this misconception, it's so much is a result of people misinterpreting or seeing one type of experience and then thinking it excludes everything else. A very common kind of human limited thinking. So let's take a look at some current NDEs. I'm just going to click, um, skip this one. Uh, here's a Peter H. NDE, NDE due to allergic reaction at age nine. And this could get a little bit long-winded because I don't know what I'm going to click on here. I don't know if these NDEs are going to be any worthwhile to read, interesting, but we're kind of we're kind of winging it, and we're going to see what happens. So uh, this gentleman, I had I had bronchial asthma and was having so much difficulty breathing that I was rushed to a hospital with my mother. Once there, they injected me with the penicillin. At that moment, I was up in the corner of the ceiling of the treatment room. I was watching my mom, the nurse, and a doctor urgently moving around my body that was slumped in a chair. I could see everything from different viewpoints within the room, but mostly from above. Well, wow, really great out-of-body experience. I watched and felt the urgency within the medical staff and the loving compassion and concern of my mother. I'm not sure how long it lasted, but it seemed like time ceased to kind of pause while it was, it was happening. I watched as a doctor came rushing in and injected me with a needle. Later I found out it was adrenaline or something like that. As soon as I saw the doctor inject me in the thigh, I was back in my body. Really, wow, this is a wonderful kind of um, out-of-body, you know, type, the kind of out-of-body experience during a operating room procedure or things like that, which really verifies NDEs as a real thing. When you go out of your body, you're able to watch doctors perform actions and, you know, try to resuscitate you. Then those patients are able to identify things later. That's like what Sam Parnia really um, studies, but not quite what we're looking for for this um for this purpose, let's let's just look at the next one. Maria V. Probable. Well, I don't want a probable NDE. I want an actual NDE. Mm. Darlene NDE due to complications of a ruptured appendix. So I was sick for a long time. Despite seeing numerous doctors, nobody had a diagnosis. On the Friday, I was taken to a different town with different doctors. Um, so I assume this is when the uh, she was having appendicitis. Um, uh, body was shutting down. They had an IV in her arm. And then at that point, I heard the sound of a soft cymbal, and someone called my name. Until that time, I was only addressed by the title of Mrs. and my last name. Then I felt myself slowly floating up in no pain. It was so beautiful as the lights that surrounded me were like watching the Aurora Borealis. As I moved up, I spotted a small black speck about the size of a piece of pepper, but it seemed to be so out of place that I couldn't take my eyes off it. The lights went away, and I felt like I was lying on grass. I was still fixated on the black spot and knew I had to see what it was. My pain returned. I felt so weak. I tried to crawl forward, but could only move an inch or so at a time. But when I moved closer, the spot got bigger. For what seemed like a very long time, the spot began to take on the form of a man. This figure and I came to a momentary stop. Then I took a deep breath and I forced myself to move one more time. It was then that the figure moved closer to me. The ground lit up and I saw two arms coming down towards me. As the hands opened up, I could see big, scar big scars in his hands. I fell back down but knew now that I had to 
look up higher, bolstering all the strength I could. I moved my head up and upper body up to see who this was. He was bending down slightly, and I could see where the bright light was coming down from. His face was so bright, it almost took my breath away, and I knew it must have been Jesus. I could see the hem of his garment and his sandals. I remembered the lady in the Bible that had been sick for a very long time, and she knew that if she could just touch Jesus, that would be that she would be healed. Uh, so yeah, Jesus encounter. It's very common with people who have pre-existing religious beliefs. Maybe it really is Jesus. Maybe it's not. You know, it's that's a mystery with NDEs. But even my deceased parents told me that they saw G They met Jesus. So that that tells you something. Uh, the next thing I knew was that I was in my bed and I saw a soft glow at the end of my bed. I heard a soft voice that was singing the song "I Saw a Man." Then the nurses came running in. Uh, yada yada. So it's primarily a um, okay. Let's see. Okay, so it's primarily an encounter with Jesus. This happened when she was 34. She's 82 now. Oh. And she says she's amazingly healthy for her age. Well, good for her. But okay, so that's a type, kind of a religious style NDE. But what, you know what we're not seeing that NDE is um, the idea that you're a floating orb of light. You know that there is no solidarity. Even in this case, Jesus was a man, had scars on his arms, and visited her, visited her as a man, um, not as a floating orb of light. You know, so even though it's a religious style NDE, I mean, did, I would still classify that as like an astral astral type of encounter. Um, so far, there has not been an ND. You know, we've read two NDEs. There hasn't really been one to match this description yet. Let's keep going. Again, I don't know how long this video is going to go. If you like these uh, this type of analysis of NDEs, then this is the video for you. But um, if you want to, if you want something a bit more pithy, maybe uh, check out some more videos that are coming up soon. But let's keep going and keep reading NDEs and see, you know, put to the test this idea that NDEs all and this is in, in, in the um, you know using the language of this lady that all NDEs um, involve these types of um, these types of experiences. Now, again, I've been studying NDEs for four years now, and all accounts claim we have no bodies and there's no physical experience and that we're just orbs of light. Let's keep putting that to the test. Uh, here's a... Okay, here's, a, here's another one. Uh, so Lola's NDE from France. I experienced this when I was 18 years old. I got the flu during, uh, um, you know, during final exams uh, in, in school. I was probably very dehydrated and lost consciousness. I don't know how long I was out because time is totally relative and had no sense anymore. Happens when you're unconscious, doesn't it? So I was not aware of time. I didn't have any religious convictions or beliefs about an afterlife. At the time, I didn't even know that this type of experience existed. I did some research afterwards and understood that I wasn't the only one who had an experience like this. When I was unconscious, I didn't feel my own body anymore. Everything was at the, uh, was at the same time long and extremely fast. Interesting. I saw the good moments of my life scrolling at top speed, then I saw the tunnel. So she had a life review that happened, went by really quickly, then she saw a tunnel, very common, a tunnel, a portal, a gateway to a, to another realm. I saw a white and yellow light that was brilliant yet soft and not burning like the sun. That's the light, which could be different things. It could be an, a higher dimension that you're just looking at the kind of the, the effects, the forces of that higher dimension that which can appear to somebody who's unadjusted to that, to that existence as being an intense light. Then I saw my grandmother who was deceased in real life. She was radiating light and happy. There was a halo of light surrounding her that prevented me seeing what was behind her. My grandmother was neither old nor young. It was odd, so I wouldn't know how to describe it. So I guess she was like kind of middle-aged. I talked to her. She told me to go back because we couldn't stay any longer. She told me that it wasn't my time and I still had things to do. Um, okay, so it's a uh, brief NDE encounter with her grandmother. 
again is your was her grandmother an orb of light with um you know an, a desireless orb of light floating around no she her grandmother was radiant and happy looking and was not old but not young either so her grandma was like i guess like middle aged so uh, assuming that she what you know was younger than she looked in this world and she was kind of guarding that light that tunnel that gateway which would presumably go into a higher plane of existence and if she came out of that plane of existence and then she is there operating in an astral body because if she wasn't then she wouldn't look like her grandmother um in a you know basically um you know, appearing about middle-aged and being radiant and happy looking with a kind of you know covered in light so this was like a heavenly upper we will call it an upper astral world and the connection point it would be a wormhole a tunnel if you want to call it that and she was guarding that entrance before you know the before lola could go through and and join her would cause her to be deceased in this world she was there guarding it as a human form in what we call an astral body so um you know and if you're in a human astral form again means you can have jobs houses temples and all of those types of things um not a formless orb of light as was being proposed that all ndes represent that you know definitely not true um okay let's let's take a look and find a couple more uh trying to find one that's maybe maybe not quite as long mm. okay this is one i want to see drew's nde after being hit by a car Again, I've never read these ndes these this is n new submissions on the wonderful enderf.org website on Halloween night, on Halloween night in 2012, I remember Halloween night in 2012. That was a good, that was a good time. I was riding a moped to my friend's house to hang out. I lived in a very small town and was the fastest, and the fastest posted speed speed limit sign was 35 mph. I was at a stoplight when the light turned green, so I began to go. All of a sudden, I was hit by a Cadillac CTS sedan going just over 40 miles an hour that had run a red light. This caused a serious injury accident since I was on a moped. I was airlifted to a level one trauma hospital. I bled out in the helicopter. Once I arrived, geez, you think I have, you know, you think I have anything to complain about? You hear about stuff like this. Once I arrived at the hospital, the emergency room doctor performed a, a clamshell thoroctomy. Thoroctomy? I remember, I remember feeling very peaceful as I walked through the flaps of a massive bright white tent. Inside the tent, it was full of light and happiness. There was every kind of animal walking around in harmony with humans. All of the humans were younger. Nobody looked older than about 30 years old. Everybody was jovial and laughing. It was a place I had never been before and I didn't want to leave. Upper astral, heavenly environment, animals that are real physical animals, humans that are real physical humans. I took to my right and saw a young man in military fatigue. So I thought to myself, I know him. That's my grandfather. He was so young and I had never seen him like that. My grandfather my grandfather was was uh, seated and told me to sit next to him. I gladly came over and sat down. We started talking. We talked for what seemed like hours upon hours. I specifically remember stressing that my legs are in so much pain and fear, fearful I'll never be able to walk again. My grandfather assured me that my legs would be all right. I always respected and trusted my grandfather, and at that point, I knew I'd be okay. Then I started hearing a female voice calling my name. After a few times of hearing my name, I recognized the voice is coming from my mother. I told my grandfather I have to go because mom is calling me and I don't want her to be upset. My grandfather asked me to stay with him. I remember considering what I should do. I remember getting up from the chair and heading toward my mother's voice. Nice show of free will. It's up to us sometimes, you know. We don't nothing is forcing us to cross over. If we have a strong desire to stay here, the evidence is showing that very often, you know, we are able to make that decision. It kind of makes it seem like we're a little bit more in charge of our lives than we think. Then I woke up from my coma. My mother kept whispering my name in my ear and telling me how much she loved me. I was back in this world we call life on Earth. After a few weeks, a nurse had asked if I went anywhere while in my coma. I told her yes and proceeded to tell the nurse and my folks where I was and what I saw. Wow, you know, 
What a great experience. I love this NDE. I guess I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to finish on that one. So we just we just read as, uh, several NDEs that were completely random. They were just the top ones on the nderf.org site. Um, never saw them before. I'm just you know clicking whatever new NDEs were submitted. None of them implicated what the misconception is that we cross over and we become formless light beings who have no desires and uh, just existing in pure love in a sea of love without any without any form or substance or without realms that look like things without without any kind of you know actual solidarity solidity i guess so we we read a bunch of random ndes that have that not only did not indicate that but it indicated the opposite and this nde uh the gateway instead of looking like a tunnel well it was more like coming out of a tent which is an interesting perception and then he was immediately in a kind of upper astral heavenly type of environment where there's people walking around, there's animals everywhere, and everyone is happy, and the animals are hanging out with each other, and you know, and um, you know, it's kind of this big party going on, which again, a lot of us can experience even by um, having like a good astral projection trip, and it's not always in these environments because sometimes you know, instead of like a big grassy environment where everyone is wearing white robes, I mean, it can also be like um, an urban environment. You know, there's many different types of astral environments, and generally that vibe is much higher because people are happier you know it's not like the the earth plane that weighs you down so heavily but in that in that case you know you have people walking around you have animals you have a real environment i guess probably like a big grassy field or something you have nature and if you kept walking you know as sure as sure as you know i could imagine you would see houses and you'd see people doing jobs and you would see civilization this is the kind of astral spectrum which can be a very beautiful place so these are just random NDEs giving an insight into these types of environments. So no, NDEs are not incompatible with uh, other afterlife experiences. This is extremely incompatible with spirit communication, with out-of-body experiences, with all of that. So this misconception, where is it coming from? Because it's not coming from NDEs. It's coming from pop culture. It's coming from preconceived ideas. It's coming from also a kind of a desire, I think, for a finality. So people actually want death to be some kind of an end and you know without actually not existing we I mean, what's a little bit better is just to exist in that kind of perpetual love and light bliss state uh for eons or for, for all eternity and that is that is uh i think enticing for people who especially people who are kind of depressed so even if so if you're dep if you're suffering from some kind of depression even reading this type of world might not cheer somebody up because you know, even if you're in a, uh, a a heavenly astral environment, and there's animals and little pet llamas and you know kittens and puppies, and um, beautiful grassy plains and temples and churches and houses, unfortunately, people depressed from this plane of existence might not even feel that cheered up by that. They want something much closer to just ending it all. And what is a nice way to end it all without? you know without actually not existing like a material like materialist believe well just going into an amorphous blob of light state of existence for eternity is a um is a nice alternative to that and so people actually want that to be real and it may be why people again use that analogy you know when you're when you're a hammer all you see is nails it's why somebody who's just looking for that as their afterlife is going to uh, literally ignore the majority of for example nde accounts or afterlife accounts and just look for those ones that fit what they want and then uh, unfortunately a lot of people don't like that interpretation and so when people like that then preach what the afterlife is like to other people and then it can cause a lot of anxiety a lot of problems a lot of stress and i encourage people just to read ndes read obes read spirit communication and hear about how it really is thanks for watching please put uh let me know what you thought of this in the comments down below um and uh what else you get involved at the afterlife topics and metaphysics facebook group and um, hopefully some more stuff is coming up around the corner. Uh, maybe more interviews. I have a couple booked in the near future. So that should be cool. And I guess that's about it. I, um, I think I'll do another video here. And then at some point I need to go and uh, uh, find something to eat or say hi to the girlfriend or take a walk in the rain. Although it's a Sunday. And Sunday is uh, complete lockdown days in this city. You're not allowed to even leave your premises or you can get arrested by the police. So I probably can't leave my apartment complex area, but you know, maybe I'll just walk around and 
do a, do a walk around the asphalt or walk around the driveway and come back. I don't know. Anyway, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.